Let's go. Any way you look at it, Sunderland came into this game with miserable form. Not just the thrashing from Blackburn. We were in a relegation spot for the six game form table and the 10 game one. However, even then, by most metrics, the Robins are a less talented team than Sunderland, so if Dodds was looking for a response today, then this was a good game to expect one. Coming into this game, Bristol City were on a resurgent run, winning three of their last four, beating Swansea and Leicester in that, prior to which they had struggled for form, losing four in a row, so which shizzle would Bristol turn up with this week? Dodds selected a slightly changed side from Blue Monday, Patrick Roberts was very poor against Rovers and clearly shot on game time and Rig had done well against Cardiff, so he returned to the right wing today. Clark started on the left and Hjelder started at left back instead of Styles, with Elise on the bench for the second week running. Liam Manning steadfastly prefers to play three at the back with two defensive midfield pivots in front of him, a 3-2-4-1 and a high back line. He had switched to a 4-4, 1-1, for two games after their four consecutive losses, but it didn't suit them. So today, it was a surprise to see them adopt that formation from the start. But it suited us. Eager to make amends from last week, Sonnen started with intent to move the ball forward as quickly as possible. Bristol City liked to play a high line in defence and push their wingers on, and to begin with, it looked like Mehmeti would give us a tough time down the left as he beat Hume. And the Robins had a clear overload at the back post. Bristol City in a good position here, and it comes off. Sunderland defender, I think it's Dan Neal who's back there. Naki Wells, who had stolen victory for the Robins in the past, also was played in early on. Stages develop, and there could be an opportunity here. And Anthony Patterson had to be off his line because that was onside. Despite this start, with Bristol City's high back line, balls in behind them down the flanks would see us profit today, and that's just what we did. Here the ball moves upfield, we win the battle in the middle of the park, and it's out to Clark, free on the left. There are chances for Adil Aushish, who has a second bite at it. The ball through the middle. Aushish is a bit flat-footed. Yeah, he's getting himself in the box. It's just a yard behind him. Jack Clark, I think he's just trying to lend it into him to get it back. And Aushish couldn't sort his feet out. Here he goes again. Aushish, he's got past his man. Aushish pulls one back into the keeper's arms. Yeah, first bit was very good, wasn't it? And, then... and here, the ball goes out wide right to Hume up in midfield. There's space in behind them. Cross is too far, though. The ball is delivered. Ball. It's in the wind. Oh. Yeah, it's just it's held up. Lovely corner. delivery from there. And this free kick is played quickly over Bristol City's high defensive line. And the chances fall to several players. There we go. He's pointing in behind. He's gone for it. Yeah, it's a bit flat from Luke on the delivery, but just chuck a ball in behind and cause problems. Well, it's fell for Alshish, and he brings Jack Clark into play here, Danny. Ball goes across. Job on the spin. Chris Riggs free. Can he get shot away? Comes back to Job. Dan Neal. Charged down. Penalty. Oh. No, there's no. a few shouts for it there. Yeah. But Do you know what? It's just three or four players. It just wasn't quite simple to get the strike rate eventually. Here. Clark recovers from Bristol City. Stumble from Sykes allows Sunderland to get the ball back. And look at the speed with which we're getting forward. It's not super fast, but it is fast enough so that we are facing 10 players in front of us. And there are more chances that come. Spreads the ball nicely to Jack Clark, who's got time. If he can bring it down, it's a heavy touch, wasn't it? But he recovers. Ball's played into the middle once again. It's asking oh. for it. Corner. Corner ball, yeah. It was good to have Jack Clark back today, even if this is only for the next five games. He worked hard in defence. Here, absorbing pressure and not being panicked into playing the ball. Position of opportunity. Not very shove on Jack Clark, but the referee plays on. And out we get. Working it out with Trey Hume. Team looking for Job. 
And at the other end, he pressures the Bristol City defence to help create chances like this. Under pressure. Oh. Comes to Dan Neal. Plays in Job. Job inside to Jack Clark. We got quite a lot of corners as a result today, and if Adil Aushish isn't on them, then generally they aren't any good. Early in the match, Aushish played this peach of a ball which saw a monumental save from O'Leary out of Ballard's header. So it'll hang up when it gets there. It does get there. There's a head. Ballard save, save from the goalkeeper. Sort of put it back into play, but on the far side, I think it's Pring who's, who's picking up. He's facing the wrong way, and then as it comes back in there, Dan Ballard just can't quite get enough power on it. See it back now. It's a Trey Hume at the far side there. See that, yeah, it is. It's off Pring's back, actually. And then there's a man on the line who probably deals with it anyway. But the keeper gets across his line and claws it clear. Sykes was behind him, yeah. Best opportunity so far, though. Goes to Sunderland. Keeper slips. Ouchie just puts the ball in the right place consistently from these corners. And yet, for the second corner of the game, they play it short, here. I get that you want to vary sometimes and draw defenders out to perhaps make more space at the back for that cross, but frankly, these direct corners are so much better than what comes of the short ones these days that I just wouldn't bother with that variation at the minute. Free kicks, however, are an area of concern, and they have been all season. We need a set-piece coach, basically, because all we've got is Ouchie's direct corners, which he does himself. The rest of our set-pieces are made up on the spot by the players, like this free kick here, where it's clear from the conversation that they don't know what to do. And it shows in the result, which is poor. He's drafty out there. So they, I think they're just going to shift it into Jack Lott, yeah. Didn't work, Danny. Just under 20 minutes into the game, Mike Dodds responded to Manning's surprise of four at the back and gave us more width by pulling Chris Rigg inside and pushing Hume up on the wing in midfield. And from here, we piled on the pressure with mounting chances at goals. In the 25 minutes between this reshuffle and halftime, Sonnen had half their shots on game for the whole game. It is this kind of in-game tactical response that Dodds can be good at and why I would keep him as a coach for whoever the incoming manager is going to be. Having those ideas on the sideline for someone in command is useful. Aushish had an up-and-down game today. There were missed passes. Balls out there from Aushish. And losing the ball. But at other moments, he wins it, and he was at the heart of lots of attack today. Almost given him away, and then tries to play in job, it's just behind him. <laughs> Equa had a great game, back to his best almost. He was strong, fighting for the ball here. Equa wins it well. Needs support. He's back here helping Hume to rob Mametti and show how to defend against him. Hume gets back on side. And then Equa with another brilliant challenge. Brings it away. He also showed skill, standing up solid here, but great skill to play out. Strong in the middle. Gets a round of applause, plays it forward. And this cross whipped in, sees him in attack, supporting. Equa. Delivers left footed. Oh, right into the corridor of danger, but no one was there. Well, well, well there are. There's three people there, but nobody. The effort was there all day from him today, chasing to win second ball here. Today, only Jack Clark had more dribbles than Pierre Equa. Nobody won more tackles than him, and he was one of the best passers of the ball today. Great game. I'd like to see more of it. Kielder, on the other hand, had a poor game today. He started clumsily with a needless foul after five minutes. Not a lot in it, is there? It's um, Sykes, isn't it? 17, yeah. He misjudges the flight of the ball here and ends up fouling the player to recover. Sykes does get there and Hill did have his hands on his back. And here, under no particular pressure at all, he lashes the ball well out of touch. Yeah, just feed it out to Jack. 
this concern aside and set pieces, it was generally a good half, and the chances came thick and fast, particularly after Dodge the three shuffle. Another delicious ball through from Clark to Dan Neal, and I'm not sure how we failed to score with all of this action. Oh, the mic drop for Dan Neely on his left foot. Again, it's another good oh. seven. It's a crossbar. Job, can he bring it down? Oh, well. Couple of saves. Clark puts Job through down the channels, and then he gathers the return to set up Equan for a shot, who is once again supporting attacking play in the box. Clark inside, Equan. Equa. I wasn't too far away, you know. No, I wasn't. Yeah, I was but after all this, Bristol City finished the first half by fashioning two good chances themselves. One at a corner that nearly catches everybody off guard. Scott Twine will take the third corner for Bristol City. It goes in near post. Oh. Patterson had to get something on that. Because he tried and a second from Hjelda who, admiring his own clearing header, watches it bounce back into the danger area without covering it at all. And it takes Luko 9 to save off the line. Wells crosses. Double save. Off the line Luko from nine. Luko yeah. 9. Yeah, we're all inside. Yeah, we stopped there. We switched off. I think Wells gets to the byline. We give up on him. I think Kjelda. And after this, we hit the break. Nil nil. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, generally much better performance. Than the second half saw Mametti substituted for Ross McCrory as Manning switched back to a 3-4-2-1. This was basically a concession that we had dominated the first half. Switching would provide them with an extra man in defence as the Robins wingbacks dropped into five at the back out of possession instead of their starting back four. And it worked as we found it harder to break them down this half. There was less space in behind and this generally stifled our game until Dodds responded with subs. Dak came on for Aushish on the hour mark. And shortly after, Roberts for Rig on the right wing. And Adji Elise replaced Hilda at left back for only his third appearance this season. Elise has had a horrible year for injury, but he made an instant impact, smashing into this tackle to win the ball. I know he's played a bit again for the, the 21s, but crunching challenge straight off the bench. Signed back New Deal, of course, as well, Adji Elise. And in the 30 minutes of the match remaining, he showed the sort of class we have been missing at left back. Keeps it in as well. Then looks for Job. Job turns his mouth. Again here, he just has pace and adds impetus to us going forward. The sort that we've missed deeply when we played Hjelda or Styles at left back or wing back. Roberts too looked better today, feeling Dak's run. And minutes later, someone rattled the woodwork again as Hume in space put the ball to the back post and Dak unmarked hits the underside of the bar. Comes back out to Trey Hume. Hume scoops it in. Oh, how did that stay out? From Bradley Dak. Yeah, finds himself free at the far post, doesn't he? We've seen how Trey Hume waiting for support just clips the ball. And I think Dan Neal just helps it on and he's free. But the match petered out with Equa still chasing. <laughs> and fighting. Oh, a little bit of after there between Williams and Equal. Yeah, I think he just feels that Pierre Equal left a leg. Yeah. He just needs to calm down a little bit, doesn't he? Good to see all the way to the end. I want an aggressive Pierre. It'll help him dominate that midfield with Dan Neal. Pierre Equal and Harry Cormack having a little. Manning's second half tactics, though, had served him up a draw, thanks in large to a magnificent keeps performance. But in the last minute of the game, Trey Hume inexplicably decides on a monstrously long throw back towards our goal instead of theirs. And we give Bristol City one last chance to steal the game. Four minutes added on here, the Stadium of Light. McCory with the cross, comes all the way through. Possible chance for Bristol City. 
charge down. Yeah, strike from Williams. But that was it. A better performance today. But really, if we are to have any hope of promotion next season, then it's exactly games like this that we should be expected to put to bed without excuse. See you later in the week for Leeds.